often wonder why we quote John 10.10 10 so much. I'm just going to read it to you again, just so that we can really catch what it says here. It says, The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life, and that you may have it more abundantly. You know, I, I believe today that this scripture is something that God wants to really reveal to us, is that there are two forces at work on this planet today. Two amazing forces. I believe it's the Holy Spirit trying to share a fundamental truth with us as believers. You know, sometimes as church people, we want to know end times, we want to know when the rapture's coming, we want to know when Jesus is coming back. We want to know this, we want to know that. And sometimes we miss the fundamentals of life. We miss the, the, the thing that I believe that Jesus wants to share. He came to destroy the works of Satan. Didn't come on a holiday. He came to destroy the works of Satan. And so I believe in the scripture, he's wanting to share with us the fundamental truth. There is one that wants to rob, to kill and destroy. And there's one that wants to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Uh, I believe that there's one that wants to take and there's one that wants to give. And somewhere along the line, we are being influenced by one of these forces. We're either being led away and we know then that the enemy came. He came right at the very beginning when there's Adam and Eve. And he tried to sow discord. He tried to sow a lie. He said, this is not really what God said. You can do whatever you like. You can eat whatever you like. And uh, they, of course, they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And as a result of that, mankind fell into sin. We know then that as Jesus came on the planet, that uh, the devil tried to tempt him by saying, if you're really the Son of God, not to experience what God said that he was just a few moments before. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. But the enemy now comes on the scene and says, really, if you are the son of God, prove to me that you're the son of God. Friend today, I do not have to prove anything to you. I do not have to prove anything to anybody. All I have to know is that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. I don't have to put on a show. I don't have to put on an act. I don't have to put on some religious airs. I want to tell you, I, I believe it's time that Christians became real and, and not some super whatever it is, spiritual thing that we sometimes think that we've got to be. I believe that Jesus is real and there's one that wants to take life and there's one that wants to give life. Right. Uh, in other words, there's two opposing forces in this world bidding for your life. It's an amazing thing this morning as uh, Ken walked into this building, he wouldn't have had a clue, but he walked up to me and he started to share about his week and he started to share about two forces that were attacking his life. I'm just standing there listening to him saying, thank you, Jesus. Because I believe it's confirmation that this is what God wants to say to us. There's, there's forces there. And you know, sometimes you can be a good person and still be influenced by the enemy uh, where, where we don't believe in God anymore. But I want to tell you that there's two opposing forces that are bidding for your life today. I pray that uh, today that you would allow Jesus to have his way. Satan wants to, to, to destroy everything that is good and godly on this earth. He's got a plan to destroy it. He wants to steal. This is another thing that Ken said to me this morning. The enemy wants to steal your peace. He wants to steal the truth. He wants to destroy the truth. He wants to kill your faith. If you haven't got faith in God, friend, I don't know what, where we're going to go. We, how many people know we need God? Yeah. I need God today. Jesus paid the ultimate price by giving His life to set us free from Satan's vice. I don't know about you, but if, if you've ever had your finger or something caught in a vice, I did something stupid just not very long ago. I've got a, an outboard motor and it's got an uh, electric tilt on the thing. And I lifted the thing up and, and it's got a little gadget that you put underneath it to bring the motor back into. And I'm, I'm using the controls, but I've got my finger in the hole. And of course I brought the thing down on my finger and scratched my finger. And, and it's like that. And I was jumping around trying to get out of that thing, but I realized that if I pushed the right button, it would then release me. You know, I want to tell you, Jesus wants to release us from the vice, from the grip of Satan's lies that are over our life. Right. And if you open yourself up to the Spirit, and sometimes what you're going to do is say, Lord, I want to know the truth. Because you see, the truth is what will make you free. The truth is what will set you free. 
Knowing the truth is what I, I believe God wants to do. Jesus paid this ultimate price and he gave his life to set us free from that vice and, and give us life. I, you know, I, I want to choose life today to set us, set us free. He then, he then sent the mighty Holy Spirit to come into our lives, to, to empower us, to, to, to give us the, the, you know, the, the, the Spirit of God wants to lead us and guide us. But unless we allow Him, He can't take us anywhere. I believe that God wants to do that with us today. He's given us mighty power. But many still fall into the trap or the snare of Satan. You know, the Bible says uh, that, the, that, the, uh, that we've been set free from the snare of the fowler. I've been set free from the snare of the fowler. I don't know either if you were there when we went to the Wood Sundays that time. And we were, we were sitting around one night and a little bird came, was run, I heard this rustle, and I looked down and here was this bird and it had cobweb all wrapped around it. And there's, there's spiders that actually eat birds. This little bird had cobwebs all over it and we didn't have much light. But anyhow, I picked this little bird up and I took as much of this cobweb off him as possible. And I wasn't too sure whether I'd got it all off or not, so we had a cardboard carton and I put him in this cardboard carton overnight and in the morning I go and I pick up this little, get this little bird out and, and have a look at him and uh, his, all this cobweb's gone from him. If he would have stayed on the ground that night, uh, a goanna, which is hundreds of the things there, or something would have actually killed that thing. But now, just, I, I just took that thing and, and I took all that cobwebs off him and, and I held him in my hand and then I held my hand up in the air like that and I opened my hand. And as I did that, this little bird flew off into the, in the I don't know where. But you know, as, I'm just reminded of that, that that's what God wants to do for you and me. We've been caught up with the cobwebs and the, and the pressure of life and, the, and things entangle us. And we've been, you know, there's certain things that have happened to every one of us. There's not one of us here that haven't been affected by somebody or something in life that's caused us to, to harden our hearts, to, to react in a way, I'll never forgive or I'll never do this or I'll never set foot in a church again or I'll never, you know, I don't know about you, but when I was a young person, I always thought that, you know, when something went wrong, that it was God that made that it did it. Thought it was God. When we, when Nancy and I were first married, uh, we were only young, and uh, we had a little uh, a son, and, and the son had a lot of medical conditions, and, and you know, I, I thought it was God, and I thought, well, God was punishing me, and, and Rodney was very, very sick, and, and, and you know, all the, the trauma and the pressure, and we were, we were too young to, to have that, that responsibility, and, and the pressure just was on our marriage and on our life and, and our joy and our victory and our peace and everything was stolen from us. All our plans of everything that you wanted to do. And, and you know, I blame God. And, and you know, but the, what amazes me is that there's two forces on this planet. And though the enemy was, was, was pouring into me, yes, it's God that did that, it's God that did that. Yet there's a, there was another force that was working that, that I didn't even realize, but there was a love of God, there was a, the force of, of the spirit of the, the mighty power of God that started to get around our lives, and, and though we didn't even realize what was going on, just the circumstances and situations, and, and we found ourselves in a church that I, I had no intentions of going to church. But I find myself in a Methodist church and, and, and we're trying to, you know, work out what's going on. And I, all of a sudden I, I, I got sort of religious, had my own hymn book. And, and you know, but I, I didn't want to be religious. I didn't want to be a spirit man. I didn't, I didn't want this God thing. I tried to do everything possible. See, might have heard this story before. I used to sit out on the fence and pull out my tobacco and roll a cigarette and blow smoke over everybody and say, I'm here, but I'm not one of you. <laughs> my first prayer that I prayed when I walked into the church, when I saw the people, I said, please God, whatever you do, don't make me like one of these people. <laughs> and, and, you know, but there's two forces that were at work. And, and all of a sudden, we've... We find ourselves giving our lives to Jesus Christ. And, and, and all of a sudden, like layer by layer, 
bit by bit, God started to pull the cobwebs and the, and the mess and the wrong thinking and the wrong thoughts. And there, there may be people here today that have got wrong concepts about God, wrong concepts about the church, wrong concepts about, about re religion, I'll, I'll call it that. Or spiritual things, but I want to tell you, God wants to open the door because you see, God, only with God can your soul escape as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. I don't know. I was caught up in the web of deceit and 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 everything else in the world system, but I thank God that God came to deliver me. Amen. He didn't come just to, to to be you know a good God. You see, there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. And Jesus came on this planet to, to set humanity free. He came to, 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 what I really believe is to show the world what God was really like. Because people have lost sight of God. And you know, today this world has lost sight of God. It's lost sight of Jesus Christ. It's lost sight of the purpose and religion and goodness knows what else. Keeping up with the Joneses and, and, and just humanism and everything else has taken the place. And so or other, sometimes we, we fit God into a little portion of our life. We make a little bit of room for God and, and the rest of our life is just caught up in this web of, of, of whatever it might be. And Jesus came on this planet as a little baby and He came uh, with a purpose to destroy the works of Satan. He didn't come for any other reason. And as he, as he comes on and as He grows up and as He becomes a man, and as he walks through life, and you know, I often ask myself, why did the Jews condemn him? Why, why did the Jews not accept him? Why, why didn't the religious people just embrace him? What, what was the problem? You know, one of the problems was, was because he didn't do it man's way. He didn't do it the way of religion. He didn't do it the way the Pharisees and the Sadducees and, and the religious people were doing things. And I'll tell you, friends, there's something that's going to happen on this planet and it's going to come it, it, as, like a thief in the night. It's, going to, it's called a revival fire that's going to start burning. And it's going to burn through the religious crud that's got around the church. It's going to break through the strongholds of every enemy. It's going to break the lies down. And all of a sudden, the scales will fall from people's eyes and they'll meet with this Christ, the Son of the living God. See, that he didn't do it man's way. He didn't, he didn't do it the way of man. He did it God's way. He wanted to do it God's way. We've been talking a little bit here about having faith as a mustard seed. Not the size, but the quality of the mustard seed. A mustard seed becomes a huge tree. Friend, we've got to come again and, and let our faith be built. We've got, to, we've got to allow something to happen inside us. Every seed... Uh, that is planted must fight the elements so it can produce the life that's on the inside of it. <clears throat> what I realize is that as Christians, it's not just a matter of walking through the park with Tiny Tim. It's not just a matter of, oh, now I'm a Christian, everything's going to be okay. I don't think sometimes you've got to walk through some strongholds. You've got to break through some stuff. And as a little seed, and as you know, I'm a frustrated farmer. And already I've got some seeds planted in this other house that I'm in right now. And I, I like growing beans. I never eat them because I don't get many beans, but, but I have a lot of fun watching them come up. Because <laughs> when a bean seed comes up, usually it's still got the kernel on the top. And it doesn't look very much. And sometimes it's got a little bit of mud on the top. Because it's had to push through some stuff. It's had to push through the, the, you know, the, to get their kernels through. And it's got to push through. Sometimes, as I say, it's got a little hat of mud on it. But you know, sometimes they, as the seed comes, and because the seed's got a determination in it to, to bust through, to, to produce life, it doesn't allow the obstacles to stop it. If it hits something hard, if it hits a stone, it'll find a way around it. Uh, as a Christian, I, if I find something tough, I, want to, I just don't want to say, well, that's too hard now. No, I want to find a way around it. Yes. I want, or I want to find a way through it. I, I, want, to, I, want, to, I want to find this way that, 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 that's going to bring this life. This, see, I, I believe that God wants to bring life. I've come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. 
The devil or the elements come to rob, to kill and destroy the very life that's in you. And every one of us has been given a measure of faith. There's something on the inside of us. Mary used that measure of faith that she had when, when the angel came to her and said, Mary, highly favored amongst women. And she couldn't work out what was going on. And, 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 and she, she just said, you know, what's going on here? This is a strange greeting that, that I'm going to have a son. And how can I have a son? I'm, I'm a virgin. How can this happen? The son that you're going to produce is going to be called the son of the most high. Oh man, this is just too much for me. But, but she came to a point where she said, Not my will, but thine be done. See, if every one of us in this room today, if we go to a place, and look, I, I know that there's many of us here today, me included, you spoke about it today, how you had to go through stuff in your life, depression and goodness knows what, where we hit this brick wall, where we hit this wall. Friend, don't give up on God. Don't give up on the things of God. Find a way through it. Find a way around it. Do something, amen, to break that thing because you see you're either coming under the influence of the Holy Spirit or you're coming under the influence of the enemy. And the enemy is trying to steal and kill the, the, the potential that's in your life. The stone that stands in the way of that bean seed coming up, it's trying to stop the potential that's in that bean seed. And that, right, right now, I've got, I've got little, little things coming up, but I'm believing, I'm believing this time that I'm going to eat beans, amen? I'll tell you what, I'm going to bring some beans in. Glory to God for my tree, so keep coming, keep coming. <laughs> I'll be selling beans shortly, amen? But Mary, Mary had, to, had to start using the measure of faith that she had. She had to say, not my will, but thine be done. I don't understand what you're talking about. It's far beyond me. I think this, I, friend, you may not understand everything. You don't have to. You just got to bring yourself under the spout where the glory comes out. You got to put yourself in a position where God can somehow or other get into you. You can... If you put yourself over in another position, away from the, the things of God, away from the church, not reading your Bible, not praying, not whatever it is, well then you come under the influence of the enemy. And his plan is to rob, to kill, and destroy. And then eventually Mary says, All right, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. And so if we just think, Oh, praise God, now everything's going to be just fine. No. Just because she said that doesn't mean everything became just fine and dandy. She had a lot of things to go through to bring forth what Jesus, what the Word, what God had promised. And friend, when obstacles come, you can't get your eye on the obstacle, you've got to get your eye on the purpose, the vision, the plan, whatever it is that God has. And Mary would have, you know, the first thing that happened is, of course, she goes and tells her, her, her fiancé, I'm pregnant. <laughs> so what does he do? He says, I'm going to privately put you away. I'm going, to, I'm going to be nice to you. I'm not going to publicly do it. I'm going to privately do it. I'm going to put you away. But then, of course, as I say, that's the natural. The devil was mostly saying to Joseph, yeah, she's been playing her. Yeah, yeah, get rid of her. Get rid of her. Get rid of her. Get rid of her. Then the, but the Spirit of God comes on the scene and says, hey, it's okay. This is what's going on is holy. What's going on is God. Two forces are attacking your mind even now. I remember when Chaz Gulo came to my, our church on the Sunshine Coast and I was preaching about Noah and the ark. He's sitting up the back saying, this idiot believes this. Because he was an evolutionist. He was, I don't know what else. <laughs> this idiot believes this. There's two forces, friend. Not long after, a word of knowledge came, which was his wife. She came out the front. She got slain in the spirit. She got delivered of demonic forces. She got totally healed. Chaz comes out the front. Looks, he's got no answer. She looks up at Chaz. She says, Chaz, I'm healed. I looked at Chaz and said, you want what she's got? <laughs> I said, yeah. So we led both of them to Jesus. He was now pastor of the church that we started at uh, Woolworth. Very much saved. See, what I'm saying is there's two forces. There's two forces that are attacking your mind right now. There are forces there that you say, well, we're a church. How can, no, how many people 
the nosy walk to and fro as well. Amen. These two big guys up and down the aisles too, but so is the Holy Ghost. Who are you going to listen to today? Who are you going to come into agreement with today? Mary, Mary's there, you know, going to get put away. But people would have, would have looked at her and said, oh, what sort of a woman is this? So she starts to show now. So what does Joseph marries her? So, and, you know, here we go now. It's gone, everything's gone on. And now she's about ready to bring forth. She's about ready to bring forth. I, I tell you what, the church is about ready to bring forth something, I believe. Amen. Might as well get on board. Because something's going to happen. Amen. I believe something's going to happen. But here, here she is now, and, and, and I, I've been around a few pregnant ladies. And they're not very nice to be around. <laughs> Is that okay to talk like that? You know, I mean, how many people know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know, it's just, it's just not very nice to be around. You know what I mean? I, I was more concerned for her than she was, because everywhere we went from six months on, I took the ball. Is that correct, Nancy? I took the suitcase. But what happens? She decides that she's going to go in at three o'clock in the morning. No, I was going to do it daytime, you know. She, she, she wakes me up and she says, it's time. I said, what for? She said, I'm going. I said, you're right. <laughs> Crazy. But it, what I'm saying is, you know, and it's not very comfortable. I, I, I know what it feels like, Lily. <laughs> and it's not really comfortable. Right? And, and, you know, it goes through stuff. And right at this point of time, they're going to do the census. So she's going to go on a journey. And it's not getting in an air-conditioned car. She most likely went on a donkey. Nancy had a donkey taken. But anyhow, she's, she goes on a, on a donkey. This is not the time to do this sort of thing, you know what I mean? She, she gets there, there's no five-star hotel waiting for her. There, 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 there's, there's a stable. You know, you, you've, got to, you've got to just put yourself... Mary has had an angel visit her, highly favoured one of God. There's no provision made, there's no motel, there's no, no what do you call those, birthing wards things? <laughs> No birthing sweet. There's a manger. Not good, you know, she could have sat there and said, Where are you, God? Is that okay? We're, 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 you know, this, this can't be God. This can't be God. Sometimes we look at a situation in our life and we say, This can't be God. Well, I want to tell you, friends, that when all oppositions come against you, I think. Somebody sang a song. It's a good indication to me that it's most probably God. Amen. That right, Kendall? Some of us that don't have much hair left and are being around, but we can, you know what I mean? That's it's, you know, I go. It, we, but we're just going to keep pushing through like that. That my like my big plan. It's pushing through, my God. Look at it, water. I don't even think. It's catching my drift here. There's two forces that, that, are, that are attacking us. That, that want to... Uh, I'm only on page two. <laughs> I better go back to page two. I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll, I'll skip a half a dozen keep it out of the I just heard somebody say, praise God. That's the first time you said praise God for a long time. <laughs> See, Jesus came to break the snare. To break the strongholds of the enemy. And he, want, he, he, he wants to set us free. He, he made a way where there is no way. He, 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 he triumphed over the devil. He, he's done exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask for. Them. And you know, to, to, today, if, if we can recognize and understand that the, there's forces that are trying to steal your peace, and, and, and if you don't have peace, 
And, and you know, when we're singing that song, all is well with my soul. If, if you don't have that feeling, friend, it's the enemy that's speaking in your life. It's the enemy that's trying to triumph them. Trying to destroy the love of God is that Jesus came to set you free. You see, Jesus didn't do it man's way. He did it God's way. Mary didn't do it man's way. He did it. She did it God's way. You know, there was a guy in the Bible, Zachar Zach Zacharias, that one of them. No, Zechariah. I don't know which one. You'll you, you, pick one. No, no, not that one. Zechariah. Zechariah. This guy was a, was a uh, priest. And his wife, Elizabeth, Zechariah, was barren. I don't know for how long. But can you imagine as Zechariah, I better not touch you because you might not you. <laughs> Zechariah would have told me, Wife, oh father, you know, we want to have <laughs> 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 I've got the scripture that says all things are possible. <laughs> very, 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 very good. <laughs> I think it's too difficult. But anyway, he would have been praying, you know, God, we, we want to hate you. And you know, year in, year out, year in, year out. And then one day he's in there doing, doing all the stuff, and an angel turns up beside him and says, Your wife, Sarah, and I'm uh, sorry, Elizabeth, is going to have a baby. And he looked at her, looked at the angel, and said, Don't be so stupid. What I'm saying here is you can be a Christian for a long time. And still be full of unbelief and doubt. And that's the enemy's plan to keep us full of unbelief and doubt. And God's plan is truly for us as people to be able to stand in His presence and say, It is well. It is well with my son. It is well. Angus had no idea I was preaching this message. I had no idea about the song. It's just God. And I believe God's talking to people, and I believe that the force of God is stronger than any force of the devil. And if you can open up your heart today to the Spirit of God, He will come in. He will help you. He will help you today. I'm wondering today if we could just bow our heads for a moment. Shut our eyes. Reverend, it is today. If you're in this place today and you know you have a need for Jesus to come in and touch an area of your life, you want him to come in and touch an area of your life where you know that the enemy has sown seeds of doubt, seeds of unforgiveness, seeds that have just grown around and choked. Like that little bird was useless with all that web around it. Needed somebody to set it free. I believe Jesus wants to set us free. And if you're in this place today and, and you can honestly say, Jesus, I, I want to be set free today. I want the truth to touch my heart. Would you quickly sort of get in today and just acknowledge that? Bless you. Bless you. Anybody else quickly just sort of get Anybody else be fresh? Anybody else be fresh? Just look in here. That's me today. I just want to know the truth. I want the truth to set me free. I just wondering today if people would that raise your hand and just stand your feet. Just make your way out in front of you. Just let God touch your life. You can't be a Christian for many, many years and still be full. Just like Zechariah. Come on, I'll just put up your hand. Come on, let's come. Let's stand. Others want to come. No, no. Others, you want to come. Others want to come. You can come. We're all going to stand at our feet.